Hello and welcome back to the Women's Football Chat. Today we will preview the Champions League semi-final clash between Barcelona and Chelsea. Jonathan Gerardes' side welcome Emma Hayes' team to Barcelona where they'll face off for a place in the Champions League final. Very excited for this first leg. Obviously, we've had a couple renditions of this game before. We had the exact same tie in the Champions League semi-finals last year. So we've got a lot to go off, a lot of references. But uh, how do you want to start, Harry? Give your thoughts. What are you thinking ahead of this game? I mean, yeah, I think it's going to be a really, really good game. You've got a Barcelona side who... But both teams who put, want to win something for their managers. Barcelona, in, you know, with Geraldes probably leaving at the end of the season. And with Chelsea, with Emma Hayes leaving at the end of the season. So both sides want to win this. Yeah, for... both confirmed leaving exactly, at the end of the season. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. For Barcelona, it's another Champions League, isn't it? For Chelsea, it'll be the first. It's going to be a really good game. It, these two sides have locked horns a lot in Europe, you know, over the years. Usually it's Bar well, I say locked horns, usually it's Chelsea do really well and then Barcelona stop them. But yeah, you know, could I mean, that change this year? I was gonna say, let's have a look at those those head to head matchups. Then of course the first meeting between these two sides in recent history was their four nil loss, Chelsea, in the Champions League final of twenty twenty one. Bar that was a big moment because a lot of people looked at that game and went, you know, Chelsea are there. It's the first time Chelsea yeah. reached a Champions League final, they're there to compete. And then four goals in the first 36 minutes and the game was done. Mm. So that was a big precursor of what's to come. Last season, obviously, Barcelona edged past them 2-1 on aggregate. That was big for Chelsea because it shows how far they've come from losing 4-0 in yeah. that final to pushing Barcelona all the way across two games of football yeah. was a really strong step in the right direction. And maybe this year, who knows what we're going to get. Yeah, and I was at the first leg as well. And there were so many chances Chelsea had to score goals yeah. in that game. They easily could have taken that game. So that would be really interesting to see whether having the legs the other way around could have an impact here. Because last time, obviously, the home leg for Chelsea was the first leg. This yeah. time, they'll get the home advantage on the second leg, which I think is quite quite crucial, I would say. That it definitely has a bit of an advantage yeah. there. So. Going to be very, very interesting to see. But yeah, head-to-head -head record. Chelsea have never beaten Barcelona before. Equally, they've only, meeting three, uh, only met mm. three times. Uh, in, terms of Bar in terms of the Chelsea team, I think the one thing I would say is that Chelsea, what might not be obvious is I think Chelsea are stronger now than they were a yeah. year ago, at least on paper. I know their form in recent weeks hasn't been great. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But bar Sam Kerr, the squad is better than it was a year ago because Millie yeah. Bright wasn't fit to play the first leg. She only played the second leg, I believe. So there's no difference there. She likely won't be available. Maybe. Yeah, maybe not. So she will, you know, that's likely the same here. And I do think we look stronger defensively now with yeah. with Jess Carter and Brooklyn. They look like a more assured partnership and with options like Mara Mielder if she can return to fitness. And Natalie Bjorn, again, if she can return to fitness, uh, both there as well. There are definitely options for Chelsea. I think Kat Macario is an X factor. That's yeah. someone we didn't have last season, but she's been brilliant. The same with Aggie Beaver Jones, the same with Shocker Nuskin. So there's definitely mm. players that can step up for Chelsea who either weren't as good or weren't there a year ago. So it can be very interesting to see whether Chelsea are mm. indeed stronger. Let's look at form going into these game, this game, though, because I've got a lot of stats that are quite damning for, for Chelsea, quite. Grim reading for Chelsea. Last five matches, Barcelona have won 5-1, 5-0, 3-1, 3-0, 2-1. -1. In that time, is they played Real Madrid, who you would say are the next strongest side mm. in the league, and they played their two quarterfinals against a brand. So, clearly they're on a really good run of form. You take Chelsea's last five games, and I know, obviously, the old draw against Ajax wasn't the worst thing, but you've got the Continental Cup final loss, the FA Cup semi-final loss, and then wins over Villa and West Ham. But it doesn't exactly paint the most... Strong picture for Chelsea heading into this game. Yeah, especially when you consider that West, the West Ham should have had a goal that was ruled off and Villa went yeah. down, to their goal got sent off in four minutes. So for Chelsea, it is really, you know, really been up against it in the last, not up against it, they've been really poor the last few games. And yeah. this Barcelona side, to be honest, they're always on form. Then I've never seen this Barcelona side not on form. They're always winning games. Every game they go into, they've got like a 30 game winning streak. They yeah. are ridiculous. The way they don't, I have to put thing. It's not just a winning streak. They don't just get wins. They absolutely batter teams. As you said in there, 5-1, 5-0, three goals. You know, they score loads of goals. They concede very little. They turn teams over like it's absolutely nothing. Yeah. Well, Barcelona have won their last eight matches. They haven't lost in 32 matches, and they're unbeaten in 21 consecutive home it's matches. good. 
So it's very difficult to see Chelsea winning in the away leg because, yeah. as I say, Barca, as I say that Barca haven't lost in twenty one home matches. That is a damning statistic. They've really made the Estadi Olympic Leo. Uh, uh, that's awful pronunciation. Louis, uh, Louis, I believe, uh, company. So they've really made that a a fortress. It's going to be very difficult for Chelsea. Mm. How different do you think the game is if Sam Kerr is fit? Is that a huge loss for Chelsea? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I think that is a big miss. Of course, but Myra Mears could, you know, could be interesting. She's played Barcelona before, you know. Yeah. It's been interesting how, what a fact, I mean, I, I remember seeing a picture of the side that played the, uh, the second leg last year, and I think Barker, Fleming and M- Mielder, it is still the, you know, the same starting eleven really, for Chelsea, yeah. you know, that have been, and obviously Ankerton Berger as well, sorry, so four there. So a few changes, but I'd argue we're a bit stronger, and we are. I would argue that some players have really stepped up this season, like Neve Charles, especially yeah. in the first half of the season, was really, really yeah. strong. I think Aaron Cuffers had a particularly strong year. But talking on Sam Kerr briefly then, she's got obviously five goals in the Champions League this season, was the top scorer before she picked up her injury. 8.45 average football rating is absurd, an average of 66 minutes per goal. That's you compare that to Samuel Paralueilo, probably Barcelona's best performer in the Champions League this season. Six goals, so one more than Kerr, but she only averages a goal every 85 minutes. Still, that's one a match uh, and a 7.69 average rating. But yeah, obviously double the amount of games for Paralueilo. I think Kerr is a big miss for Chelsea, but Ramirez has to step up into that role. Yeah, I think this is perfect time for Mario Ramirez to really show what she's got. It's been a bit of a slow start to her Chelsea career, yeah. but what a game this would be for her to really hit the ground running you know, and really you know, announce herself to Stamford Bridge. And I think that could be a big part to play. I think if but if, if Chelsea can keep it respectable in the away leg, even if it's a 2-0 loss, I think you know Chelsea, they've already sold more tickets than they did last year for the home leg. Yeah. It's second, as you said. So that's a huge, that's, I think that's an advantage for me. This Chelsea side looks stronger. And, you know, I, I just think oh, at home, Chelsea could have the edge. It's just whatever happens in Barcelona that could change this tie for me, which is the game yeah, we're talking that's, about. That's what I, I completely agree with you. I think, obviously, Sanford Bridge is that X factor because Chelsea haven't lost there when playing there this season. Lauren James has scored in every game that they've played there this season. Their stats that do make really good showing. He's another player that is going to be very interesting what happens because Lauren James has had a good kind of... A, 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 a very easily this season... Gone quiet in the big games. Yeah. The FA Cup semi-final, the Conti Cup final, games against Man City. She's gone quite under the radar and not really turned up. This season, she has to turn up. She has to perform. Yeah, I mean, you were saying there about how, a moment ago, about how the Chelsea team isn't too dissimilar. Mm. But, like, Neve Charles was a winger back then. Wow. Was playing on the wing in that game against Barcelona. Jess Carter played out wide at fullback with Magdalena Erickson, Erickson and Mielder as centre halves. Berger in between the sticks. Kankovic started, which would be a surprise to see in a game like is that this. The first leg or second leg? This is the first leg. Oh, I was just, I was and then the second, the second leg side, the very similar, side. but Jesse Fleming started uh, through yeah. the middle instead of Kankovic. And again, Erickson, Mielder, Carter, Berger, all being you know, crucial in that team. So I think a very different Chelsea team to yeah. what we saw a year ago. In, in certain aspects, obviously, there's, you've got core players like Cuthbert, Manly, Leopold will both likely start. Ever Perisay, say you'd expect to start. But other than that, I mean, go right in as well, sorry. But Lauren James is that big X factor. She didn't start either of those games. I think that's a big impact. Joanna yeah. Wright and Canary didn't start either of those games. That's a big impact. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Chelsea yeah. team, what the Chelsea team looks like against Barcelona. I personally think they're a much better team. I know they've had a rough patch of form recently, but I do think the Chelsea team are better. Well, that's the thing. It's again, we are, we've said this before about Chelsea this season. It's those big game players need to turn up. And I'm going to yeah. mention her again. Guru Wrighton. We said the Conti Cup was our chance. We said the FA Cup semi final was our chance. We said the City game away from home, uh, at home, sorry, was her chance. And she's had countless, op- and, you know, she's had countless opportunities to turn up and she hasn't. This is the game to do it. Wrighton, James, Ramirez, they have got a massive opportunity here to turn up on the biggest occasion yeah. and to prove why they're the best players in the world. I think that it's going to be very interesting to see how Chelsea line up because there's a little bit of a conversation as to where everyone is best suited. I think Ramirez is fairly nailed on up front. It's just where everyone else plays after that. Yeah. I think Cannon on the right-hand side also quite nailed. 
For me, I'd rather see Lauren James in the 10 and Gura out wide than James out wide and Nuskin in the 10. If we're going to play Nuskin in the 10, I'd keep writing and play James up front. But for me, yeah. you, James is ineffective. Really ineffective yeah. off that left wing. I'd rather see her centrally. So, yeah, I feel that, that is, that's going to be quite a crucial thing. I think, for me, Lauren James' best performance this season came against Manchester United, where she played yeah. in that 10 role and really facilitated everything positive and because yeah. Chelsea could fight because she was able to drift into the half spaces mm. and can ride and right and made the pitch really wide yeah. there was then space between the fullback and the center half for James to operate in she could take players on and we know how good she is in those sort of areas so for me that's how Chelsea have got to play this game get James into the best possible positions yeah. with those balls in the channels for her and you create that by having Gura right and Myra Ramirez and Joanna Wright and Canada as your front three. Because then if you can't find James, you've got players there that can either take the ball out one, take players on, or get into Ramirez's feet, get to hold it up, and then she can look to bring players into the game. You've got lots of options there. Yeah, and I mean, Chelsea's big game players do need to turn up. They really do, because the difference is, we know Barcelona's will. Bon Matti, yeah. Puteas, Paralo they will be on their game. They, you know, they don't go miss it. That's the difference. They don't, they don't, there's no chance that Aitana Bon Matti and co go missing in the game like this. Yeah, how do Bar- how do Chelsea keep Paraluelo quiet this season? 17, 17 goals. Do you? Or sometimes you just have to go, just let her score. You know, it is going to be a one hell of a job for whoever decides to, whoever gets gets that fullback position. Yeah. I mean, I would want a marker. I don't think any, any fullback on the planet wants a marker. It is yeah. going to be a very, very tough job. In her last four Liga F games, she has eight goals. And that includes Real Madrid again that she didn't score in. I will, I, yeah, I do caveat this. Is you know, I, Chelsea have had a bad run, yes, but they've played Arsenal, you know, they've played yeah. Manchester. Barcelona, the Liga F, I think they could put Bomat in goal and they'd still win every game like an absolute canter. I mean, to put it in perspective, obviously, a lot of people have, have really played up Paraguay's 17 goals, but obviously, she did score four in an 8 0 drubbing of Real Sos, of 7 1 drubbing of Real Sociedad, sorry, and she did score four in a 5 0 win over Sevilla. So, what's the point? They do have it somewhat fortunate in the league. Sorry, that was an 8 0 win over Sevilla. They do have it quite fortunate in the league, but. There's no doubting they are still incredible players and they will offer Chelsea oh, yeah. a, a they big are. challenge. Yeah, they are. I think Chelsea, we said, I said the Chelsea but a minute ago, I said the Chelsea players need to perform to show why they are some of the best players in the world. That's yeah. because they are playing against the best players in the world and there's no getting past that. What really confused me is why on earth we're playing these Champions League ties at the weekend. Mm. Because I think yeah. it really harms Chelsea's chances rather than Barcelona's. If you look at Barcelona's games, because they can they you know they're really comfortable, they'll they've they've won the league. So they don't have to focus on that their game against Levante Las Planas in the midweek between the two games. But Chelsea can't afford to do that. So they've had to play a strong side. Or, or they rotated against Aston Villa, they did quite well there. And you know that was you know lucky to get away with that one. But they can't Who's rest the, up. Is their midweek next week, Chelsea? Oh, they don't. It's they move. They, rather than bringing it forward, they've pushed it back. So that's, that's quite that, nice yeah. from the league. But still, Chelsea have got other con- other things to concentrate on. But Barcelona do have that free run. They it's haven't played. Anymore. They haven't played this Chelsea week. Chelsea throwing away all the competitions. At this well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But the league is so much. You know, Chelsea top that now. But the league, I they have to either concentrate way, on. Well. I don't unless. Barcelona win by more than two goals. I don't think anything is decided in this first leg. No, I'd, I'd agree with you there. But what I would say is if Chelsea win this first leg, like, that is a big, big step because yeah. their home form this season has been really strong and that would really rock Barcelona. Yeah, but I, I think for Chelsea, the priority is staying in the tie. At 2-0, I think Chelsea can get it back at home. If we're looking at 3-0, 4-0, I mean, it's that bad. I, 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 that I was going to say, I don't think Chelsea should have any worries yeah. about that. That, sh- that shouldn't be the prerogative. I think Chelsea fans would be you know, underestimating themselves it by saying that yeah, no, for me Chelsea I get that but that's not representative for me mm. Chelsea are on the level to play to beat Barcelona and I, yeah. and I don't think an awful refereeing performance against Manchester United and Emma Hayes' mismanagement against Arsenal really changes things for me. Chelsea's yeah, still an incredibly right. strong team. And if there's one team that are able to put those setbacks behind them and focus on this game, if anything, I think it would give them more motivation. I think it would be more motivation to go out there and give your best because there's nothing to, they've got nothing else to play for now. Yeah. They have to win the Champions League. And they have you, to win the league. They're you, the two yeah. things they've got to do now. If you tell Chelsea, though, do you want to sell the Champions League? 
every single player in that team, coaching staff, whoever will say Champions League. They want yeah. Chelsea want this UWCL in Emma Hazen last year. Uh, I, I do think that, if, without a doubt, every single person involved with the football club would lose the WSL title if it meant winning this Champions League. Mm. And, it, and and to be honest, I, this is going to sound mental, but I think this semi-final against Barcelona will be more difficult than the final. I agree. I think the final could be really weird if Leon and Chelsea are there. That's because right. I, I have no idea how that has happened. But Sonia Bomposter, I mean, it's something we've not spoken about on the channel yet, and we will have a video out eventually. It's yeah. just that at the moment we've got so much to talk about in the women's game. But I think that yeah, Sonia Bomposter could be is pretty much you know guaranteed to be Chelsea's manager next season. May well manage against them in the final of the Champions League. That's a horrible weird clash. But uh, anyway, that's besides the point. Let's focus on today's game. Predictions for the match then tomorrow. Obviously, you're not joining us for the stream, but we will be live. I will be live. So join me from 12 o'clock on Saturday. We'll have 30 minutes to build up before the game kicks off at 12.30. So we can talk about everything ahead of kickoff. But Harry, what is your prediction then? You can do your prediction now. I will save mine for okay. stream. So anyone watching, um, tune in tomorrow morning. I am going to go. I, I've, 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 I think we've had my prediction sorted for weeks since the draw yeah. came out. I will go... Barcelona 2, Chelsea 1. I think Barca will just nick it at home and it will set up a really exciting second leg. But yeah, I, I, I'm i expecting... I think if Chelsea took the lead away, they'd probably hold on to it. So I think Barca will race ahead into a 2-0 lead in the early in the early like half an hour. And then Chelsea, with 10, 15 minutes to go, will get a goal. And obviously, in a normal game, that wouldn't mean that much. But obviously, with it being two legs... That goal is going to be pivotal for the way that the tie goes forward. But yeah, first leg for semi final, 2 1 Barcelona. Fair enough. I like it. As I say, I will save mine for tomorrow. Do join us. 12 o'clock start, 12 30 kickoff, Barcelona versus Chelsea in the Women's Champions League semi final. Games don't get bigger than this. So I'm very excited for it. As I say, join us tomorrow. The stream page will be on the channel. So you go ahead, set notifications, leave a like, and get ready for this for the game. I'm very excited. Should be a good one this Saturday. But that's everything from us today. If you, uh, if you want something to go and watch, then go check out our WSL predictions. If you're a fan of the WSL, we did that earlier in the week, and that'll be on the screen here. So you can get, get all our predictions ahead of this weekend. You can see whether we got the chelsea Aston Villa game right. Maybe. Obviously, that game's already passed. But yes, go check that out and join us tomorrow live on stream. That's everything from us today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.